Hi everybody, this is another video in the course uh, Sitting at Girls Carpentry and Joinery. Uh, this particular video is going to be about joinery products. And um, <clears throat> so we're going to talk first of all about doors. Doors are a very basic joinery product which all carpenters um, who are working in workshops will become involved in doing. Um, the first thing we need to do is to tell you that you need to become familiar with all the different names of the parts of a door. I've got a door to point to you at the minute, but let me read them out for you and you need to really um, have a look at a door, a traditional uh, panel door or even uh, a traditional uh, glazed and panel door and uh, itemize for yourself um, the different parts of the door. So you've got the top rail, that's fairly obvious. You've then got the cut bar and the lay bar. Now the cut bar and the lay bar, these are the bars. The cut is the top one and the lay is the one that goes into it that hold the glass into place. And then there is a stub tenon. That's actually these, uh, these lay bars are a stub tenon and the cut bars are stub tenon. And then there is the style. Now the style are the large pieces of timber on the side of a door. Um, if you have a look at some of some doors that have um, fielded panels and uh, they're glazed at the top, then you will have what's called a mid rail um, and you'll have a gunstock style. And this is because the, um, the side of the door is large and then it's reduced in width for the top. And this is very common. And sometimes a gunstock is used just because there's a difference between the timber being full timber at the bottom and then reduced in width at the top. And so there's a small area where there's a gun stock joint. Okay, these are all the little quirks of being a joiner that you really need to know about. And then there is the muntin. Now the muntin is a vertical member at the bottom of a door underneath the mid rail and it inserts into the bottom rail. So then you have what's called the raised and fielded panel. Some doors don't have raised and fielded panel, but some just have a flat panel. But very often they'll have a raised and fielded panel. That's a little bit hard to explain on a video like this. But um, go and have a look at doors and you'll soon, um, you'll soon understand what all that is about. Um, there's a couple of little... Um, extra things we need to know about. There's a thing called a collection mould. This is a moulding which is put on the reverse of a door. The fielded panel generally sticks out at the front um, of a door. At the back it's generally a straight panel so there then is a little collection mould which is put around that, that um, panel just to make it look pretty. It doesn't, otherwise it looks very stark, it's just square. Now the, the, the stars of the door are the two upright pieces. The muntins, as I said, are, are the members that are near the bottom, okay? The rails are the pieces that go across a door that actually hold the two styles in place. The gazing bars, well, they're the little ones at the top which are, which are used to be glazed. The panels can be made of solid wood, which is then a, a, a fielded panel, or they can be made of plywood or MDF or some other suitable material. There's various methods used, as well as the traditional joinery that's used. There's various other methods, and you need to look out for this. Sometimes doors are constructed with biscuit joints, and some doors are constructed with what's called a loose tongue. <laughs> a loose tongue doesn't mean you're telling stories. It means that there's a tongue that goes into a, a groove at the top and a groove at the bottom, and it's loose. In between. I don't mean it's loose in the sense that it can float around because it's glued in place but it's loose in the sense that it's not attached to either of the um, to either of the uh, members of timber. And then of course there's different types of door. Now there's four main types of door. There is the match boarded door, there's the panel door, the glazed door and there is the flush door. So we're going to talk about them one by one. We're going to talk really about the matchboarded door. Now matchboard is um, it's thin timber, thin long and, and wide timber that has a tongue on the one side and a groove on the other side. This means that as they go side by side so the one that has the tongue on it is able to fit in the groove of the next one and this creates a complete uniform uh, boarding on a door. Now some doors are made 
with only match boarding and what's called ledges. Ledges are the pieces of timber that are put across the match boarding and it's screwed or nailed in such a way that that becomes a door. Okay, and it's the most simple door. It's very, very simple to do. Now there's another stage. That's, that's called um, um, a ledged match boarded door. The next stage up is ledged and braced. So these have the ledges across, so just the same, but they have braces going down as well at an angle. Okay, sometimes they have one brace that seems to go right through, and generally speaking, they have two braces. Uh, but the important thing is this, is that that's all that there is. So this is very often used in like a back shed. Okay, there's another form of um, door, which is called a framed ledged and braced so it's a timber frame you know typically it's a hundred mil um, styles and it's got ledges and it's got braces okay so a framed ledged and braced door that's a very standard thing this is a very typical door that would be on say a back door of a house sometimes they'll even have the same style on the front door of a house what's important is that on a framed ledged and braced door the match boarding comes all the way down and finishes at the bottom of the door it doesn't set into the into the bottom rail it comes all the way past it and down to the bottom reason for this being as rain hits that frame uh, as rain hits the door so it runs down and it gets to the very 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 bottom and it doesn't rot the bottom rail okay so that's that so the braces are put on in a particular way as well Braces are always put on from the side where the hinge is going up at an angle, from the side of the hinge. The reason for that is, as doors are heavy, as they start to want to drop, the braces stop it from dropping. They stop the door from dropping. If the braces are on the wrong way around, then the door will freely drop and you'll get a, a, um, an out of um, a, 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 an incorrectly um, squared door. So that's very important. Sometimes when, when you buy a door, the, ledge, the braces are supplied, but they're only tacked into place so that you can decide which side you want the braces to be. You can just take them off and turn them around and put them the other way around. So there we are. Now, a panelled and glazed doors. Now, a panel door, okay, very simple. It's a door that's made with panels that are full, full panels. Now, it might be timber, it might be plywood, for example, or MDF or something and it might be a solid timber, but that's a panel door. A, a glazed door, okay, is a panel door, but the top part of it, generally the top part of it, it may be all of it, but generally the top part of it is designed and made so that you can put glass in there. Now you might put glass in small pieces or you might put glass in the whole piece. Of course, you might even have put glass in the whole thing, the whole door, <laughs> but um, a glazed door is a door that has glass put into it. Some of the manufacturers nowadays, especially uh, abroad, where they will use uh, dowels. So they don't, they don't have a proper mortise and tenon, they have just um, um, a bottom rail or a rail that comes into the style and you can't really see, but inside there's no joint. It's actually just some dowels. And sometimes they come with the slightest amount of glue on them, which means that over time they actually can just come apart. They can come apart because they're not really 100% secure. Um, flush doors. Now flush doors are very common. We all know about flush doors. I've got flush doors in this house here and they're just basically hardboard or plywood on some sort of a basic frame. Um, basically they are exceptionally light. They're very cheap. They're very quick to erect. Um, and sometimes that hardboard has been molded, it's been pressed and molded to look as if it's got panels, but actually it hasn't got any panels at all. It's just a sort of the appearance that it's made to look like that. You can have hollow construction. You can have a door that has um, a little bit of timber up the side, across the top and down the other side. It will have a few large blocks put in just where you want to put the lock or where you want to put some hinges but the rest of it will be what we call eggshell so it'll be it'll be um, like a honeycomb um, construction made out of uh, cardboard 
that's been soaked in a bit of glue. And so when you open it, if you're able to take the front of it off, you would see all these honeycomb shapes. It's not really uh, solid at all, but it is actually hollow. And then of course we have other types in which the door itself is actually solid all the way through. It may even be constructed in the same way as a hollow door, but it may actually be filled just with some MDF or something like that, whatever they feel they can put in. When using one of these flush doors, it's important to examine it properly, especially take a look around the top or the bottom, because it will have a little notice printed on the top telling you which side the lock block is. So there will be a large piece of wood, just a bit of basic piece of wood, put behind the lipping at the side enough so that you can put a complete lock without going into empty space. That's um, a very common thing and that's, that's something we need to look out for. Make sure that you are putting the door the right way up so the lock block is in the right place and make sure that you're putting the hinges on on the right side. Obviously the hinges are on the opposite side to the lock block. Occasionally you'll have a door where it'll have two lock blocks one on the one side and one on the other side. Then of course the door is ambidextrous. It's not handed right or left. It's actually just um, it can be used either way round. It's a good way of saying it. So a haunch then is something that's part of a mortise and tenon. And uh, maybe I could just draw it. Let me just grab. <clears throat> okay, so let's suppose you're doing a mortise and tenon and you're doing it on the top of a door. Now, it's very important that you that you construct it with an ordinary mortise and tenon, of course. That's an ordinary mortise and tenon. Okay. Okay, and it looks, oops, it looks just like that. Um, yeah, there we are. Sorry, it's just a little bit tricky to draw, really. Okay. Okay, right, there we are. So there's the haunch. Okay, so there's the haunch on a mortise and tenon. Okay, now this little piece of cutout here enables the mortise to have a little bit of extra material left in place. If it was taken out completely, then what would happen with this tenon is that it could easily slide straight out of the end of the style and then it wouldn't actually, it would, the door would fall to pieces. So by leaving a small section, Okay, this, this gives the door um, some stability in the tenon. The tenon now is actually locked into uh, a place where it won't come out. So this is called a haunch. And the haunch is traditionally um, about a third of the distance. So if you can imagine that that is a little square of about a third each way. And that gives the door some stability. Of course, the other joints down, down the door will have similar haunches as well and especially at the bottom because these um, these tenons must not be allowed to just slide out of the bottom of the door they have to actually have something that's going to hold them in and that's going to be that little piece of wood that's been left in on the style to enable them to not pull out these things are better experienced aren't they sometimes than talked about it's just one of those things <coughs> <coughs> and so really then the joint design is very simple for a mortise and tenon um, the mortise is generally spe generally speaking the tenon the width of the tenon and the mortise is generally speaking a third of the width of the of the thickness of the style um, sometimes we can increase that by a little bit probably up to about 42 percent and what that does that produces an even stronger um, um, secured mortise but that's the general rule and when the doors are constructed normally wedges are put in into the mortises to enable them to be really held in tight it's possible to put the wedges in while in the process of of gluing up you put the wedges in and as soon as the wedges are in and they're nice and tight it can then be taken out of the clamps and stood to one side or left on a bench 
to dry and then you can do the next one so the purpose of wedges are to enable you to continue working you don't have to wait for an hour for the glue to set there are actually different types of uh, tenons as well there's a uh, stepped rebates sorry the stepped shoulders it, because sometimes the mortise and tenon is going to go into a timber that has um, rebate in it so one of the shoulders has to go a little further it's got to go down to the bottom of the rebate so and the tenon uh, sometimes can be reduced um, to allow it to do that and of course there's a few other types of mortise and tenon there's the bare face tenon now the bare face tenon is traditionally used on a framed ledged and braced door we talked about that a moment ago the boards are attached on into into the frame on the front which means that the the ledges at the back have only a a shoulder on just the one side that they're, they're called a bare face tenon sometimes we have a situation on a door in which there is a mitre on the corner of the shoulder of a rail and this produces a, a, a nice little mitre angle so that as it comes together it looks quite pretty and is very functional and lastly we sometimes have mortise and tenons they're a little bit tricky to do in which this the middle rail very often has shoulders that are on an angle and they cater sometimes for the thinner rail at the top and a wider rail at the bottom or they cater for the situation whereby the top rail may have a rebate so therefore the tenon has to go further to reach that rebate the shoulder has to go further to reach that rebate than it does at the bottom and so therefore that shoulder comes down at an angle now as i said these are all far better experienced than they are talked about but at least i've been able to give you some clues and some guidance on how these things are done verbally well there we are i think that's that's the information for this particular video so we look forward to seeing you next time have a good day bye for now